In this session, we take a closer look at the European Union, Japan, and North America, the, uh, what the regions that we call triads, the economies that we call triads. In particular, we're going to look at the single uh, European market and the competitive structure, and we're going to look at um, the um, Canadian and the Mexican uh, economy, and uh, then we're going to cover the uh, Japan as business center. The European Union uh, today has 28 members uh, and uh, soon it will be 27 with the UK leaving the European Union uh, but originally it started uh, as a, a collision of uh, 15 countries uh, this is the pre-2004 European Union as we uh, know it today and then um, in 2004, 10 other European countries joined, and then uh, Bulgaria and Romania in 2007, and Croatia in uh, 2013. Uh, the, the European 15, the EU 15, are closely linked, both economically and politically, and uh, this group is more loosely uh, connected to the 13 new members. How did we... Um, end up uh, with a single European ma market. The origins of the European uh, Union go back to what we had before uh, and under the name of European Economic Community. This started uh, in the mid, mid uh, around 45, 1945, and uh, in late 1950, it was formulated as a community uh, with six uh, founding uh, members. By 2013, the European Union has had grown to 28 uh, countries, uh, including uh, a good number of uh, East European countries after the collapse of the uh, Soviet uh, Union. The objectives of the European Union is to eliminate uh, any custom duties among, among member states, eliminate any, any obstacles and any uh, uh, problems, any factors that uh, uh, affect the free flow of import and export of goods and services and establish common uh, customs duties and unified uh, policies. Uh, one of the biggest uh, advantages um, the citizens of European Union enjoy is the ability to, to freely move uh, in between different countries and uh, the um, and uh, with this, uh, they get an advantage of more relaxed uh, rules and regulations about settling in in specific uh, countries. Um, uh, in the European Union, there are aspects of um, of agricultural policies that are considered to be um, harmonized in the sense that there are common practices and policies uh, around agricultural uh, products, uh, transportation, technical strand standards, health and safety regulation, even educational degrees. Um, Consumer protection is uh, something that uh, appears uh, very commonly in European countries and uh, recently, a few years ago, we had the introduction of the GDPR, the regulation and the law uh, around the data protection. This is something that has been accepted and implemented by all the EU countries. Um, as mentioned already, there are laws that uh, control competition and there is an attempt to uh, share a common uh, framework. In terms of funds, uh, the European Union receives funds from the um, uh, country members and uh, in turn supports development of uh, regional or, uh, or even uh, national um, initiatives. Uh, Back in um, 2004 or 2002, uh, the uh, discu discussions uh, arose around the common uh, currency and uh, today we have uh, this currency, we have Euro, uh, which is shared by the majority of the member states. And um, this led uh, uh, the states, the, the countries closer to uh, common monetary and fiscal policy. In terms of the strength of the GDP, we have a table here uh, with the triads, the US, Japan and uh, European Union. Uh, the European Union is uh, comparable now to the um, US in terms of GDP. 
and uh, uh, in terms of population it's uh, bigger than the US uh, if you see um, we can also spot some characteristics here for example if you look at the labor cost in manufacturing uh, maybe this data uh, yes uh, this data is from 2012 but the, it, it, it is um, this data is indicative to the situation the labor cost per hour is um, a quite uh, high in the uh, European Union whereas in the US is much uh, lower and of course the unemployment rate is um, quite uh, high at quite high levels also uh, another point uh, to make um, about the European countries is that overall the public st sector is um, is quite uh, bureaucratic and uh, it doesn't and is not very flexible um, and in fact if, again if you can see uh, if you look at this table you see that uh, the government consumes a, a good percentage of the whole production of the GDP of the countries in terms of productivity, there are high wages, salaries and fringe benefits and uh, this has led to some disadvantages um, uh, in the European uh, companies when compared to US and Japanese counterparts. Uh, there are very strict labor laws again, in, uh, especially in the uh, tight core of the European Union in the 15 countries and many times make, it makes it difficult for uh, employees to uh, to deal with uh, the workforce uh, they are working the european firms are working to increase their productivity and to match other competitors uh, but uh, all these uh, factors that we mentioned um, uh, work um, uh, as a disadvantage in terms of investment spending um, uh, overall, the, sp the spending lags behind uh, the, uh, e uh, the US and Japan. Uh, part of this can be explained by the, increase, uh, the increased wages and the benefits during, during the 80s. Um, so um, as a result, as a result, the European the EU firms uh, did not have enough capital to invest and then they had to to turn into borrowing uh, and now this demand for loans resulted in higher interest rates which uh, in turn uh, harm or uh, affect uh, investments by the late 80s the EU, EU government spending has risen to almost half almost uh, almost half of the GDP to 50 percent of the GDP uh, whereas in the uh, United States and Japan the the government spending is around 30 percent because of these taxes were raised and uh, then again limiting the available uh, funds uh, uh, in companies but also the uh, disposable income um, for uh, of the consumers more recently they have been doing uh, the EU economies they have been doing much better uh, although the last uh, uh, six to seven years uh, many countries faced um, a financial uh, crisis uh, with Italy, Greece, uh, Spain uh, being uh, in the need of, um, of uh, bailout funds. The Japanese economy um, the Japanese economy is the third largest economy in the world compared to uh, USA and China uh, in terms of productivity and the average wealth of the population um, the economy grew quite uh, rapidly in the early uh, years uh, and this is due to the traditional support that the businesses receive from the government uh, the unique ma capital market which is a combination of national uh, funds and uh, funds from investors the uh, traditional grouping of the firms something that is called Keiretsu uh, which is a, a grouping of host companies and banks uh, linked um, all together through ownership and um, other uh, ways of cooperation and uh, uh, in Japan the role of, of corporation in society is quite strong there is a feeling 
uh, of uh, responsibility of social responsibility and um, and this is reflected in the relationships between the organizations and the employees in terms of social and cultural characteristics the uh, the japanese society is more collective rather than individualistic um, meaning that um, uh, people have a strong sense of uh, uh, what is good for the society and they are very uh, willing to to sacrifice their lives or to um, to uh, n n n to postpone some gains uh, in order to save the social life this is not something that we see in uh, western um, societies uh, in the eu and uh, very much in the in the us and actually not at all in the us uh, within companies uh, the uh, the honor and hierarchy and loyalty are of paramount importance uh, it, it again comes uh, through the uh, culture of the organization and uh, uh, obligation and responsibility are uh, very important um, what we see in uh, Japan is um, a very long-term relationship between uh, corporations and employees usually uh, people um, work for a company and they stay they start working from a comp for a company and they stay with this company uh, until they retire this is very common model whereas uh, again in Europe and in US uh, uh, this is not uh, very common at all uh, this reflects the general um, th this situation in, in Japanese uh, society reflects the general um, relationship and uh, respect that the parent and child uh, can um, can exhibit and the way they feel and this is uh, brought in the business world and then you have the uh, relationship between manager and employees or the relationship between different uh, hierarchical uh, levels the strong respect for elders and um, this is ex defined and expressed in uh, complex uh, language forms and behavior and group activities um, and as mentioned earlier this is very different from the individualism and uh, meritocrat meritocratic form of organizations um, that we can see uh, in other uh, countries and and of course uh, as a result this poses this behavior and this attitude uh, poses um, obstacles and barriers for um, for uh, foreign companies uh, in terms of uh, business characteristics, uh, in Japan we see some of the uh, strongest manufacturing methodologies, total quality management, uh, just in time uh, delivery, continuous improvement, all these methodologies that we have today in management and operations uh, originated uh, from a Japanese company to just in time has been uh, uh, perfected uh, by Toyota and uh, also in um, in uh, West we now or at least the last uh, 10 years we implement uh, oper methodologies and operations um, that uh, borrow from the Kanban and uh, system uh, and, uh, or that is found in Japan the agile methodologies we we follow today in west uh, they all originate uh, from uh, companies uh, with strong manufacturing history um, in japan uh, in another characteristic of the business environment is the strong uh, research and development that we see here uh, that we see in japan um, the japanese uh, uh, the Japanese economy invests a lot on research development and in fact not on theoretical research development but rather on applied um, this uh, this because most of the funds come from the industry rather than from the government uh, despite the common uh, uh, beliefs we have whereas in uh, in Europe uh, most of the research is supported by the government so the connections um, in Japan between education research and uh, 
and uh, industry are uh, much stronger and much more developed. And of course, uh, the distribution retailing and customization approach here is very different. Uh, many times the distribution channels are uh, based and rely on uh, personal um, relationships and this can uh, um, add some um, expenses and costs uh, to the uh, production. Now we're going to turn our attention to North America. Uh, in North America we find uh, an agreement that we call NAFTA, which is North America Free Trade Agreement. Uh, this is between the US, the Canada and the Mexico. Uh, although uh, it, it talks about free um, free trade. Uh, in reality, it hasn't uh, abolished all the trading barriers, uh, but it has relaxed and made uh, commerce and business much much easier. Uh, its member st uh, country can retain its own uh, trade laws, and uh, there is a legal mechanism to appeal the the decisions. Uh, as mentioned earlier, NAFTA is a step forward to, uh, towards liberalization, uh, but, but still it's not there. And um, in fact, in, um, in Europe, uh, we enjoy uh, less barriers, less trade barriers than uh, those countries um, in, uh, under NAFTA. Uh, with, uh, and of course, every situation has uh, the pros and cons. Now, uh, Canada, Canada is... Uh, a very is a country with high standards of living, one of the highest standards of living. Uh, it's a country of uh, 35 million, and the gross domestic uh, product was 1.6 trillion. Uh, that's that's not. Uh, this is a very strong economy. Um, most of the um, most of the uh, public funds and most of the uh, budgets of the Canadian uh, government uh, are uh, balanced uh, in terms of payment uh, and this uh, is because of the uh, food, energy and motor vehicle exports. Uh, the primary trading partner is the US and uh, uh, and there's a big percentage of Canada's imports uh, that come from the U.S. as well. Uh, so the the point here is that Canada and U.S. are uh, very, uh, very tightly linked in terms of uh, business ter uh, terms. Uh, the, um, the markets are characterized by private enterprises and uh, there's a high degree of privatization in uh, in the Canadian economy, uh, but there are still some um, some uh, sectors like the public utilities and broadcasting that are held and owned by the government, or uh, or uh, or they carry strong regulations. Um, the threat to um, to privatization is is very strong and deregulation and um, there's a number of companies uh, in uh, the last uh, 10 or so years that have uh, have uh, moved to uh, private uh, management um, another characteristic of the Canadian economy is that uh, there's a, a large number of small businesses you have SMEs, uh, a good number of SMEs, and this plays, these businesses play a major role in the economy, and it accounts almost uh, of eight, for 80 percent of all the new employment in manufacturing. Um, apart from manufacturing, uh, Canadian economy is service oriented, and um, uh, in those services, in, in this. Uh, sector uh, we can find uh, companies of different uh, size uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, the, the vast majority of canadians work in service industry or almost 70 percent of canadians a look at mexico now the mexico uh, mexico this country uh, has the strongest economy in latin america uh, the GDP growth rate is very, very strong and uh, it has uh, high levels of exports, especially to the United States. United States uh, imports almost 25% of the fruits and vegetables uh, from Mexico. 
so Mexico has become a major player uh, for international investment and um, one very uh, important message and key characteristic of Mexico as economy and as business uh, location um, is uh, that uh, they're making they're managing to create very strong relationships uh, with um, the US and um, they are uh, they're able to use physical and human resources in both Mexico and US. Uh, they have uh, created strategic clusters uh, between uh, uh, Mexican and uh, American companies uh, in a number of sectors like petroleum, uh, automotive, housing, household materials, uh, even technology and computers. And this uh, puts Mexico in a strong uh, position in terms of uh, uh, country specific assets and, and uh, uh, ultim and in turn this makes uh, Mexico a very uh, attractive economy. Thank you for watching.